So how do you run a successful digital fashion house without producing any physical garments? That was the challenge that we accepted as the fabricant. How could we still express ourselves without harming the planet? How could we still create these narratives, these emotional narratives, without having to waste as much? So today, I will take you on a little journey through digital fashion and what that means. Everything you see in this presentation has been created in 3D with renders. And we are always digital and never ever physical. And with that, we try to create this new narrative for fashion in which we try to really extract what identity means and how we can still express ourselves. And this never ever physical, it comes from somewhere. Because as a young fashion designer, I was in school confronted by images like this. This is the Atacama Desert in Chile. And this is where tons and tons of clothing are being dumped right now, still to this day. And as a fashion designer, I felt a massive responsibility. How will the future of this industry even exist if we go on like this? That's absolutely insane. If we stop producing clothes now, we can still dress ourselves for the coming 50 years with all the clothes that are still on this planet. And this might sound crazy, but we are still producing all of these collections, these new things, these new garments. And as fashion brands are even burning perfectly new collections that have never been worn, I was like, I cannot work in this industry. We have to create a new, a new narrative. We have to create something that will actually do better for the world, but also for the people living in it. Because not only are the conditions of the people, like of the, the planet in which fashion is operating, very horrifying, but also the way they treat their people. And to me, that was not the way that we wanted to go forward. So I decided to take a different route. And in school, I taught myself how to use 3D. I come from a background of growing up in this world where I'm a millennial, so I'm in between kind of yeah, Gen Z and millennial, I'm kind of on the borderline. I grew up in a physical reality, but it started to become more digital every single day. And it became a new kind of reality that I was moving into. And I was expressing myself through digital platforms, through the Sims, through gaming. And it always felt very natural to me to be able to express myself and explore who I was as a person. Yeah, so it's like this simulation of life, which I felt was really inspiring. and. I could endlessly dress these dolls and explore myself without me having the harsh criticism of the outside world. So I could explore my identity without being judged. And I felt like that was a very free place. So when I got back to school, like when I st was studying fashion, I wanted to explore that identity and what identity means. And um, well, when I started to explore 3D fashion, I, I came to my teachers and I was like, so I want to graduate with a digital collection, not making any physical garments. And they looked at me like I was absolutely insane. Because they were like, but why? Why would, you, why would you want to do that? Why would you not want to create physical garments? And I explained to them, well, listen, our lives are becoming more digital every single day. We are in this new world, especially because of the pandemic, where we've learned to communicate in digital channels and express ourselves in this digital reality. So it's no longer just the physical reality, but it is also the digital world. And in this digital world, you can create any narrative you want. This fashion show you see here is the first fashion show that we created. I managed to graduate, woohoo, <laughs> uh, from a traditional system uh, with a digital collection. And I found a business partner who actually believed in the idea. Um, and together we started The Fabricant in 2018. And this is the first fashion show that we released back then. And as you can see, we have some people front row in the back. Um, we have, yeah, we, we, we thought, you know, let's create a catwalk setting to really make you feel like you're in this catwalk, but in a sort of alien reality. 
And this is where we love to be. It's like on the borderline of realism and uh, digitality. Because when people saw this show, they thought it was real and it was really funny. Someone came up to me and was like, so where can I buy this stuff? And I was like, okay, um, I can give you a USB stick. <laughs> but that was back in the day, you know? Um, that was the first iteration. But it gives so much opportunity for expression because you no longer need to like create um, uh, this, this standard beauty ideal that we see right now in this world, which is all about like bigger lips and like crazy, you know, like really adjusting yourself to this incredibly horrifying stereotype. While you can also have, you know, orange eyes and purple skin. Like how amazing is that to explore, right? It's just like a whole new world that opens up. You can be literally anything. If you want to be a dragon, be my guest, right? What would that feel like to move in that kind of body? So this is what fascinated me as a designer. We waste nothing but data. Obviously, data is still wastage, for sure. But at least it's not the toxic um, industry waste that fashion is creating right now. We're creating like a new way forward, and we're taking brands along with us as well. In the past pandemic, when the pandemic hit, none of the fashion brands could actually express themselves anymore. And we had most of the fashion brands actually on our doorstep saying, could you please create a fashion show for us? Because we, we cannot do anything anymore. So we were like, okay, let's show the example. Let's, let's see how we can do this. So we worked together with a lot of brands. One of them was Off-White, which you see here, which was still when Virgil Abloh was still alive. And um, we created this virtual collection exploration for them. So they didn't need any models, no photographers, no, um, no locations. All of this has been created from online things. So the background you see, for instance, is uh, Google Maps created in like this 3D environment and 3D scanned places as well. So all of this is, is creating a new aesthetic. Like, and it's, it's really coming from this, this idea of, of the digital world and how we move in that and operate in that. But we felt like just helping brands to get there, that's already a great start because we take the fashion industry along with us. But we also felt that that was not enough. And we wanted to sell our own digital items because where does the value come from in this digital product, right? It's like, you don't really know. And when we tried to, s to sell our first dress, this was in 2019, um, this dress was created in collaboration with a very interesting company who sold pictures of cats for $130,000 minimum. And we were like, oh, that's interesting. A digital product that you can sell and that you can actually make money off. And that seemed like this perfect fit for digital fashion and wanting to create that new reality and make a livelihood out of this. Because a lot of people were looking at our company like, oh, that, that's cute. Mm -hmm. But like when we actually sold this item in 2019 for $9,500, people were like, Wait, what? what? You sold this dress that doesn't exist for $9,500? How? And why? <laughs> and a lot of people were really pissed off because they were like, is this what the world has come to? So blockchain is this new technology which underlies this amazing new exploration territory of creating livelihood for artists and people that are creating things. So this dress that we sold back in the day, it was actually the first NFT of a garment that ever existed. Back then, it was not called NFT, but non-fungible token is the term for these items that we can now trade in this digital reality. And it's super exciting because all the people that are involved can be credited and profit of this dress. And this person wore it on her Instagram. This is Johanna Jaskowska, she's an influencer. She wore this on her Instagram, where maybe 50 people saw her walking in physical reality that day. Millions and millions of people saw her wearing this garment online. So I'm asking you, what is the actual difference? So when we go into the story of crypto, I feel like there obviously is a lot of bad press around this. And I think that's because it's new and it's also somehow um, good that we have this discussion. But I feel also there's a lot of opportunities. 
And we, as the fabricants, nobody heard from us four years ago in fashion. And now we are a brand. And I would have never expected this in my life, to be able to stand here in front of you today to talk about this. But that, to me, gives the image of everybody should be able to do this. You can start a fashion label from your backyard, uploading your designs and making money of it. To me, that is where the future lies, is the power to the creators, not the big brands out there who are creating the things. No, it's the new creators that are coming into this new reality that are bringing a fresh wave of creativity. Because to be honest, the way fashion has operated for the past 30 years, you know, it's lost its edge. It's become boring. And I feel like with this new digital technology, we can create so many new storytelling layers and it can be super exciting to create that new reality uh, together. And we, as this brand, even landed on the cover of Vogue last September. And this cover was actually sold as an NFT as well. So you could own this cover and you can also wear the crown. So on the Vogue Instagram, you can actually go there and wear this crown as well, because we made it into an AR filter. So that's what we mean with like direct wearability. You can create something and you don't have to have it shipped to your home. You don't have to wait for it to come to your home. You can immediately wear it, which to me is incredibly exciting as a self-expression tool to go into that direction. We work together with a lot of uh, famous crypto artists. Um, I don't know if you know Krista Kim. Who knows Krista Kim? See some hands? Yeah, not so many. This is an artist who creates um, digital spaces using meditative technology. So she is using this kind of tech. She sold uh, a house back in May, a digital house. I think it was for 500K. Yeah, I think in a way it's interesting that you can buy this house for yourself and live in that reality in the virtual world. And obviously that's a whole new concept and a lot of people don't get it. But if you look at the youth, you know, and the way the youth is operating this to them, digital and physical is just one big thing. There is no more difference between that. For them, it's the same. And it's almost even more important what you wear in the virtual reality, so in Fortnite, for instance, than what you wear the day after in school. So Web3 is punk. Web3 is this new ideology where we use crypto as the base and where we use creators at the forefront of this new revolution. It's creating a better message for sharing profits, sharing resources, and not being in this way of, of non-transparency, where right now in our world, everything is not transparent. You cannot see into things. It's very difficult, especially in the fashion industry. You always keep things secret. It's, I got taught this in school, like keep, keep the stuff for yourself because people will steal it. But that's not the ideology of what crypto is all about because in this industry, we can actually create these kind of narratives and credit all the people that are involved too. We can create these kind of new ways of operating and um, to us, we actually call that the fashion world uh, 3.0. And in this Fashion World 3.0, all of the creators involved get profited. Because what fashion brands do now very clearly is, as we already talk, heard in the, one of the previous talks, is steal from a lot of different cultures, but also from young designers, and they all get away with it. And that has to stop. We have to create a better system through which young creators are being credited and are creating livelihood for themselves. And with the system of blockchain, we are able to do that. So the platform that we're, we're building is called the Fabricant Studio. And all the people that are involved there, the garment creators, the fabric creators, and the people who put the two together, all get equal credit and equal pay because of the smart contracts that we program. A lot of people from the traditional fashion industry has called us, have called us socialists, which is quite interesting. Um, but I feel like we're actually hyper-capitalists because what we're doing is we're creating, we're using the system, we're hacking the system of capitalism and using it for good and for creators. And maybe there's one question, in, I don't know, but maybe there's one question left in your mind where you think like, was this the question? How do I wear this? How do I actually wear this? Of course, a very good question. 
Um, within the gaming industry, within the virtual world, you can wear this in games, you can wear this in metaverses, you can wear this in all kinds of different places. We have connections with all kinds of metaverses. But who of you has Snapchat? Can I see some hands? Not so many, but if you scan this QR code, you'll go to a Snapchat link. And there you can actually see that I am wearing a digital look right now. And if you point it to me, you can see that I'm actually wearing a digital look. Can any of you see it? Cool. Right, cool. Yeah. So fashion does not need to be physical to exist. And to continue the way we do now is much crazier than anybody ever called me 